Welcome to segment two of lecture nine, where we're gonna introduce more definitions, namely space time and space velocity, which I call the space tunes. Space time. Okay, so what is a space time? Space time is defined, see, Defined when you see the three lines it means defined it doesn't mean it's equal it is defined Okay, equal could be the result of mathematical uh, Operations, but this is defined. Okay, so defined as V divided by Epsilon not the volumetric flow rate at the entrance The space time is the time necessary to process one reactor volume of a fluid based on entrance conditions so it's a space time so it's concerned with time right it's concerned with time so let's see it's the time necessary to process one reactor volume of a fluid so if my reactor as you can see here if my reactor has a volume of 0.2 cubic meter okay so what would be one reactor volume of a fluid well one reactor volume fluid will also be will have a volume of 0.2 cubic meter okay so that's the volume but of course you say the volume is function of temperature pressure and so on we say well let's take the entrance condition the temperature at the entrance the pressure at the entrance okay based on that okay so here we go. We have now one reactor volume of fluid. This is the one reactor volume of fluid based on the entrance condition. So now the question is, how long will this volume take in order to completely enter the reactor? Okay, so if I take this volume, how long does it take for it to completely enter the reactor now so now this volume now is here inside this reactor of course you will tell me it depends on how fast it's getting in it depends on the volumetric flow rate and of course it depends how large the reactor is right the volume okay so let's see the time it takes for this fluid to enter the reactor completely is the space time. It is sometimes called the holding time or the mean residence time. That's how it is referred to. Okay, let's do a quick calculation here. Let's do a quick calculation here and let's see. For this system, for this system, okay, we have the volume is given okay the volume is given let's see here the volume is given and the volumetric flow rate is also given can we calculate tau can we calculate tau yes we can calculate tau so tau here equals the volume which is 0.2 cubic meter divided by the volumetric flow rate how fast representing how fast the material is being processed entering the uh, reactor so it's given here 0.1 cubic meter per second of course this is the volumetric flow rate based on the entrance condition so what would be the answer well simply let's see the units first right so the unit will be in second 0.2 divided by 0.1 is simply 2 okay so we have 2 seconds so it takes two second okay from the time this volume starts entering the actor all the way until it enters completely so this point now is here and this point now is here so it completely enters the reactor so it shows you how long you need to wait until one volume of reactor is processed so that means if tau is large, if tau is large, 
That means you need to wait longer. So it takes longer for the process, for the reactor to process one volume of a fluid. So what is better? High tau or low tau? Small tau or large tau? Well, basically, the smaller the value of tau, that means the faster you can process the material. Okay, so that means you produce the product at a faster production rate. Okay, that of course, if you can maintain a good conversion with this high, with this low tau. Okay, good. So lower means better if you're gonna achieve 100% conversion, for instance. In the absence of dispersion, so we'll talk about dispersion in chapter 4, but not in this course, in another elective course. Okay, there is forward mixing, backward mixing, and so on. So if you have, if you don't have this dispersion, okay, the space time is equal to the mean residence time in the reactor. So only in the absence of dispersion, you have the space time is equal to the mean residence time in the reactor. What's the mean residence time? This time is the average time the molecules spend in the reactor. The average time. Okay, that's why it's called the mean residence time. The average time the molecules spend in the reactor. Okay, this is a typical space time for industrial reactors. For batch reactor, the mean residence time is between 15 minutes to 20 hours, which means this should be the production rate. The representing, reflecting this production rate. In a CCR, the mean residence time is smaller. It's from 10 minutes to 4 hours. So mean, which means you can produce more, you can process more. See, up to 3 million tons per year. Here we have only 100,000 tons. In a tubular reactor, the residence time is way shorter. The residence time is way shorter. So if you calculate tau, it would be much smaller compared to the previous two systems. It ranges between 0.5 seconds to 1 hour, which means you can process up to 5 million tons per year. Okay, great. Okay, this table shows space times, shows space times for six industrial reactions and reactor. Let's look at two of them. Okay, this reaction is the, the first one here is the esterification reaction. You have alcohol plus acid. Okay, you have alcohol plus acid. Okay, it will give you an ester and water. And this reaction is a liquid phase reaction run in CSTR at here relatively high temperature, relatively, but of course, it's a liquid phase reaction. That's why I'm saying relatively high, but in general, it's a low reaction temperature if we look at the gas phase reactions. Okay, and the space time here is around two hours. Let's compare it to this reaction, which you know its name already, right? Remember, it's the water gas reaction, and it's run in packed bed reactor because it needs to be catalyzed and run at 300 degrees C with a high pressure of 26 atmosphere and look at the space time very small very short space time only 4.5 seconds right this is something optional if you want to learn and do it okay that will be good we're talking about mean residence time okay because we said we said not always not always tau equals or let's say defined as mean residence time okay it does not okay Tamam, only in the absence of dispersion. Okay, so how is the mean resistance time calculated for a flow reactor? That's a good question to ask. Let's take a plug flow reactor as an example. Calculate the differential volume that each plug passes through in a differential amount of time. So let's 
calculate that differential volume that each plug passes through in a differential amount of time meaning okay if this is my plug flow reactor okay i'm talking about a differential volume differential here volume okay this differential volume okay need to be calculated for each plug okay and a differential amount of time so at a given differential time for example 0 0.001 second how much volume this plug covers takes okay so that is dv differential volume we want to calculate the differential volume dv equals epsilon the volumetric flow rate times that differential time okay how much we said the differential time was 0 0.01 second for example we said okay and is this correct yes it is correct let's check the units let's say dv is cubic meter okay and let's check the volumetric flow rate it's cubic meter per say, second and dt is second so yes it seems to be correct so can you calculate that differential volume yes dv equals epsilon times dt okay therefore the average time necessary for a plug to travel from inlet to outlet of a tubular reactor i.e the mean residence time okay we want the mean residence time can be calculated from the following equation so that's t okay that's t yeah yeah, that's t okay so t equals the integration of dv over epsilon how did we get this well very simple because we wrote this equation we wrote it this way dt equals dv over epsilon and now we want the total time okay we want the total time okay we want the total time not only the differential time no the total time so on the total time okay from the beginning to the end of the reactor okay from the beginning to the end of the reactor and total how much it will spend that's the mean residence time can be found from this integral okay great let's go to something else the space velocity the space velocity the space velocity is defined see the three lines here defined it's defined as epsilon naught over v therefore you can say oh then the space velocity is simply one over tau okay looking at the equation you could say that but we we'll learn something more in a minute the space velocity indicates how many reactor volumes of feed can be treated in a unit time so now this is indicating or calculating how many reactor volumes of feed of course of course you will say based on the entrance condition right how many reactor volumes of feed can be treated in a unit time let's take same example here okay the volume of the reactor is known the volumetric flow rate is also known let's calculate the space velocity let's do that so the space velocity equals epsilon naught right which is 0.1 cubic meter per second divided by the volume 0.2 cubic meter so this cancels out with this right so the units for the space velocity would be 1 over second right because it's per unit time okay and what is it half in this case so in every second and every second you can treat only half of the reactor volume only half so in each second you treat half of the reactor 
فوليوم اوكي طيب ليتس بيفور وي بروسيد ليتس مي اسك ا كويستشن وات دو يو بريفير وات دو يو بريفير لارج سبيس فيلوسيتي اور سمول سبيس فيلوسيتي well obviously you want to process a lot of reactor volumes per unit time right if you process a lot of reactor volumes of a fluid per unit time that means your production rate is high correct so you don't want to treat only half of the reactor volume per second you want to maybe treat three five ten of the reactor volume per unit second that is of course if you maintain your conversion okay. for the space time for the space time the epsilon naught is measured at the entrance condition but for the space velocity other conditions are often used really yes what are they the two space velocity commonly used in industry are the liquid hourly space velocity the liquid hourly space velocity lhsv and gas hourly space velocity that is ghsv let's take one by one okay the epsilon naught the epsilon naught the volumetric flow rate and the interest in the liquid hourly space velocity is frequently measured as that of a liquid feed rate at 60 degree Fahrenheit or 75 degree Fahrenheit. Some people use this, some people use that. Okay, but it needs to be stated in your report. So the epsilon naught in the liquid hourly space velocity is frequently measured as that of a liquid feed rate at a given temperature. Even though the feed to the reactor may be a vapor at some higher temperature. So even though the feed to the reactor may might be the vapor phase okay but now my calculation of the space velocity is based on the liquid hourly space velocity as if it was liquid if it was liquid what would be the volumetric flow rate okay so basically the liquid hourly space velocity is defined as epsilon naught for a liquid even if the flow was gas okay divided by the volume so let's see let's assume that we have this black flow reactor and the feed is entering at this actual volumetric flow rate and it's a gas but i cannot use it here i cannot i have to see what would be what would be the volumetric flow rate if the flow was liquid at this temperature for instance well that's easy to calculate right that's very easy to calculate because you know what is common between the actual volumetric flow rate the actual volumetric flow rate and the imaginary or the virtual volumetric flow rate if it was liquid what's the common well the common is the mass flow rate the quantity okay that's the what is common so let's calculate the quantity then so let's take the actual volumetric flow rate plug it into any equation for state to calculate the molar flow rate okay so you have the actual temperature you have the actual pressure you can calculate the actual molar flow rate you can then use the molar mass to convert it to the mass flow rate of the gas okay the mass flow rate of the gas should be equal to the mass flow rate of the liquid because that's a reality i'm keeping the quantity that i'm processing in terms of mass okay so it's the mass flow rate is the same the mass flow rate of the gas actual gas is the same as the mass flow rate of the imaginary liquid if it was liquid now that we calculated the the mass flow rate at the entrance for a liquid we can convert it to the volumetric flow rate of the liquid using the density of the liquid at this temperature or this temperature okay okay you can 
exercise at home mm, you can just for simplification you can choose steam okay steam so that's water vapor okay at a temperature let's say of 200 degrees C okay and a pressure of one atmosphere which has an actual volumetric flow rate let's say of three cubic meter per second and let's choose a volume of one cubic meter and then you can calculate to calculate the liquid hourly space velocity type what's the other way well we have the gas hourly space velocity right so the gas volumetric flow rate epsilon naught and the gas hourly space velocity is normally measured at stp standard temperature and pressure what's the standard temperature and pressure well standard temperature is zero degrees c and the standard pressure is one atmosphere okay so the volumetric flow rate is not the actual volumetric flow rate at the entrance but is the volumetric flow rate at stp so again what do i do if i have a given actual volumetric flow rate for gas at the actual temperature feed temperature and the actual feed pressure okay i can calculate the gas hourly space velocity okay how well we say the thing which is in common is the molar flow rate the actual molar flow rate and the molar flow rate at stp because whether i'm reporting the molar flow rate at the actual condition okay or at the stp condition should be the same right i'm not changing the quantity which i'm processing okay therefore that means you can use the equation of a state to calculate you know either of them right okay so can you calculate the actual molar flow rate yes you're going to use an equation of state let's say the ideal gas therefore that's the actual i use the actual pressure right and i use the actual volumetric flow rate and the actual temperature remember because we have p naught times epsilon naught equals f t naught times r t naught okay so i want to calculate this guy okay so here we go okay so i have p naught times epsilon naught divided by t naught okay so an r is constant anyway and then we equate it to the act to the molar flow rate at this tp which of course it can be calculated from the same equation but now i'm using the standard pressure and standard temperature okay and i'll be using the i'll be calculating i should say the epsilon naught at stp so what's given let's see what's given and what's required so do we have the actual volumetric flow rate yes we do we have actual pressure yes we do we have actual temperature yes we do do we know the standard pressure and temperatures we know so the only thing which is remaining to be calculated is the <coughs> standard volumetric flow rate okay so you calculate this and then you plug it here and then use the volume so you can use the previous numbers as an example to calculate this please do okay so we said the two space velocity commonly used in industry are the liquid hourly space velocity and the gas hourly space velocity and the definitions are shown here but why shabab why we're using the liquid hourly space velocity and the gas hourly space space velocity in other words why we are not using the actual values but we are using the like calculated imaginary values why is that well simply because if we have different conditions right different conditions that 
the volume of the different condition at the volume at the different condition the volumetric flow at different condition will be different although although i'm processing the same amount i'm processing the material at a, at the same given molar flow rate or volume flow rate okay so i'm processing the same quantity but because the temperature and pressure at the entrance is different therefore the actual volumetric flow rate will be different but who cares i don't care about the volumetric flow rate i care about the quantity remember we said the higher the space velocity the better it is right so i want to compare two processes with different feed conditions and i want to know how much material they are processing so therefore i should not really be used using the actual volumetric flow rate i should be using a volumetric flow rate at a reference because they are they are showing you the quantity okay so let's see if you have one process at this temperature and this pressure and this is the actual volumetric flow rate we have another process which has exactly the same volumetric flow rate but different conditions so now you tell me shabab which one which one is actually contains or is processing more quantity well would you say well no they are the same quantity no they're not the same quantity although the volumetric flow rate is the same but they are not the same quantity because the conditions are different so which one contains more quantity okay in order to know which one contains more quantity you have to calculate the ft naught right ft naught and then you can compare okay but actually here and this two definitions i care about volume and volumetric flow rate so i shouldn't be really using the actual volumetric flow rate i should be using the the standardized one the reference one so that in both cases the conditions would be the same and therefore now i can compare the volumetric flow rate so now i can compare apple to ap apple okay because the conditions are all stp for example okay great so let's see let's do that let's calculate the volumetric flow rate both at stp now you can see that this process is processing more volumetric flow rate right more volumetric flow rate okay that is 2 million liter per minute okay compared to this which is only 1.8 so now i know that this process is processing more quantity how was i able because i choose the same reference the same standard okay so now the volumetric flow rate actually representing the quantity and as you know the standardized volumetric flow rate is not a indication of the volumetric flow rate as much as it is indication of the quantity type great so standard conditions are defined and used to allow for easy and fair comparison see now the comparison between this system and this system was very easy right and fair very easy and fair unlike the actual system where i had to think the actual system i had to think which one is more which one is better come on okay this is example 28 you can again do this at home let's see for the plug flow reactor in example 23 okay the volume was given calculate the space time and the gas hourly space velocity where the entering where the entering which is the actual volumetric flow rate was two liter per second at the actual temperature and the actual pressure actual temperature and actual pressure so how can you calculate the space time and the gas hourly space velocity well for the tau it's very simple tau simply is defined as v over epsilon naught you're not sure you put the units liter liter per second right so the units will be 
second so that's correct okay so you can divide the volume okay so it's given on the actual volumetric flow rate at the entrance okay so basically that is in this case 2.165 times 10 to the power 0.165 times 10 to the power 3 because that is in liter divided by the actual volumetric flow rate at the entrance and this shall give you the answer okay great so the answer in this case is 18 minutes okay let's look at the gas hourly space velocity for the gas hourly space velocity you know that it is defined as the volumetric flow rate at STP so the standard volumetric flow rate divided by volume so can I use can I use this value here no you can't no you can't the first thing you have to do is to calculate the so calculate the epsilon log at STP from the knowledge of the actual data from the knowledge of the actual data okay and then you divide it by the volume and you'll get the answer which is 15 per hour okay and the unit has to be per hour because it's a gas hourly okay that's great please do that at home okay you have also here another example okay have another example this is actually from a uh, paper and the paper reference is shown here okay you can check this so on a laboratory scale in pentane and pentane was cracked at temperature of this is the temperature and a pressure of somewhere between 10 to 60 bar using the hgsm5 catalyst which is a type of zeolite catalyst for this reactive system calculate the liquid hourly space velocity so talking about n contained so we're interested in liquid hourly space velocity liquid hourly space velocity and the weight hourly space velocity huh this is something new well so what right nothing scares you you know you know how to deal with everything now okay so weight hourly space velocity that means it's a ratio of weights rather than the ratio of volumes right okay so the additional information the catalyst weight is given the bulk density is given the pentane liquid flow rate is given the liquid density is given so we need to calculate the liquid hourly space velocity which is given here with this definition okay and you can also calculate the weight hourly space velocity which is given with this definition please do this at home okay so let's conclude chapter two the previous examples which discussed in chapter two show that if we have minus ra versus x data so if we have the kinetic data the rate of reaction as the reaction progresses then we can calculate the reactor volume necessary to achieve a specified conversion however the rate of reaction does not depend on x alone right because we know that the rate of reaction is a function of two things c concentration and temperature okay this can be calculated from x but this hmm, yes it can be calculated by x but it has to be included as well in your calculations okay so because temperature is also something you need to consider if you want to have the true value of the rate of reaction so the temperature depends not only on x but on some other things other variables as well okay so it is also affected yani the rate of reaction the rate of reaction is also affected 
by the initial concentration, temperature, pressure, and the catalyst activity for a catalyzed reaction. Okay, so the experimental data obtained in the lab and presented earlier as minus Ra versus X are useful only in the design of full-scale reactors that are to be operated at the identical conditions as the lab experiment. So if you want to scale up instead of going from the lab reactor to an actual reactor inside the, in, in, in the industry and in the plant, okay, if you want to do scale up, then this scale up should maintain the same condition as that in the lab where you found the data. Okay, so you cannot really in the lab use a condition and get this data and then you say, okay, I'll design a reactor which will operate at totally different conditions using this calculation. You cannot do this. Okay, so the experimental data obtained in the lab and presented earlier as minus R versus X are useful only in the design of full scale reactors that are to be operated at the identical conditions as the lab experiments. However, such circumstances are seldom encountered. This is not really the reality. Okay, when I want to scale up, I'll be, I should be able to scale up for operation at any condition, not the same exact condition in the lab. Therefore, we must revert to the method that will be described in chapter 3. Okay, to obtain minus Ra as a function of x, an equation, and of course other variables as well. So we'll shift from using kinetic data as points to kinetic data as equations. And that will be done in chapter 3. Please stay tuned and we'll meet soon in a tutorial and then we go to chapter 3. See you soon.